Hey, welcome in, guys. Welcome in, dude. Hey, welcome in, guys. We're about to start episode three of the Prolific Podcast, dude, with your host, Alex. And we also have beside me my beautiful girlfriend, Andrea. We'll be talking about a couple things today. We'll be talking about... Hey, what's up, Pigo? We'll be talking about life life as a girlfriend, dating a streamer. We'll talk about, you know, some relationship stuff today. And overall, you know, see see our different perspectives and stuff. But uh, how are you doing? Let, I'll let you introduce yourself to them. Ew. <laughs> I'm his girlfriend. I'm also Fry. Let's not forget that. That's it. I don't know what I, uh, I work at a hospital. <laughs> I might have COVID. <laughs> yeah, Domo says real low name dead. <laughs> <laughs> oh, look, it's Domo. Here, he'll tell us what to talk about. <laughs> real love ain't dead. I mean, real love, it's just, see, that's that, that's a difficult thing, you know, maintaining. Yeah, oh, my God. <laughs> Health work stand up. Health workers stand up, dude. There you go. You got to stand up. <laughs> No, I guess we're both a little nervous, you know. This is our first podcast together as a couple. We just want to see how things are going to go, what, you know. You know how it's going to be, how the conversation is going to flow. I think I think to get started, I guess my first question to you is like how is it how is it looking at me before I was streaming, you know? Like now that now that I started streaming and things like that, like what do you feel like the difference is before and now that I'm doing something I actually enjoy? Oh, that's easy. That's like more confidence within you. Makes you do stuff. <laughs> makes you excited to do something, if that makes sense. Most people don't have something to be excited about. Because it's something you've always wanted to do, and it's something that you finally got to start doing. It's something you've been talking about, but after you decide to just go get it and go do it like no like you just seemed happier doing this which is why i support you because if it makes you happy you know and it's bringing money to the table you know <laughs> oh my it's uh bringing me chick-fil-a <laughs> why not <laughs> you know <laughs> no <laughs> to get copyrighted <laughs> I guess from my perspective, let me grab it. I guess from like my perspective, I was just like at a point where, you know, I was at a, I was at a horrible job in a horrible environment. I hated it. If you guys don't know, I used to work at a look at the support <laughs> domo. If you guys don't know, I used to work at a restaurant. Horrible environment, horrible place. I was there for about five years. I think I was almost going up to like six year, six years. I was just at a point in my life where I was like, okay, I gotta make a choice here. Uh, am I gonna am I gonna do what I finally want to do and take this risk? You know, it's like I need I need to I need to do something. You know, because for all these years I was like telling her like I want to do something. I want to do something I love. Like I don't know what it's what it's gonna be. You know, but I know I want to do it. And it's not doing restaurant shit. And then I finally found my calling. I was like, fuck, okay. I love playing video games, and I I would say so myself. I'm pretty decent at them. Like anything, I anything I touch, I'm gonna be pretty good at it. <laughs> no, but the ego aside, I think that uh, humble brag over here for sure. I th- pretty good. <laughs> no, I I think the ego aside, I you know I was I was super confident about it. I was like, okay, you know I'm in the, I'm in the, in this point in my life, and I'm twenty turning twenty years old and starting starting a new decade. It's like what am I? I'm tw- turning 23 years old, but at the time, you know, oh. it's like starting this new like decade. It's like, what am I going to do? Am I always just going to sit here and talk about what I want to accomplish and what I want to do and wish for this and wish for that? So I was like, you know what? Let me get dedicated and let's just take this risk. Let's buy this freaking however much this PC costs, you know, not, let's not talk specifics because it was pretty, it was, it was a lot. And I was like, let me take this risk, dude. And I was like, what am I going to do? What do I have to lose? I'll lose more if I don't try. You know? I'll lose more if I don't... If I don't at least attempt to do something. You know? I guess, what are some of your thoughts on that? Like, taking risk. Well, 
I'm somebody you've always said that I Why jump blindly into things. What? Tell them what they're gonna hear. What are what? Domo, stop! <laughs> That's Chick Fil A money. <laughs> I mean, we appreciate it though. <laughs> That's my Chick Fil A. <laughs> I guess, like, what was your question? Sorry. What do you think about <laughs> taking risks? Oh well, I take them all the time. I do it blindly too, with two hands tied behind my back, <laughs> and I hope for the best. What do you like to say? I like to throw shit on the wall and hope it looks pretty. Right. <laughs> 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 you know, what's the worst that can happen? Somebody tells me no, I get rejected and something. At least I know I have an answer and I tried. I don't have this what if like mentality okay. and well, what if I did this? What if I did that? You know, no, what's going to drive me insane? So you're pro risks. Oh, yeah, 100%. I'm going to jump and hope there's water at the end of the, you know, <laughs> at the end of the cliff. Sign, yeah. You know, and if there's not and I die, I died trying. Right. What is that? The, you miss 100% of the shots you don't take. So you're also not gonna excuse us because I only have one mic. Unfortunately, we're we're working what we're working with. But thank you, Domo, for the ten bucks. I really appreciate that, man. Good looking out. I think it's like, uh, yeah, it's like. I think a lot of people have this like expectation. Also, dude, it's like, if I don't, if I take a risk, I need everything to work perfectly. I need everything. I need everything to come out the way I, I planned it to come out. It's like, I, hey, what's up, Miles? At the end of the day, it's like. You can't have this expectation of I'm going to take this risk and everything's going to work out perfect, you know? That's not that's not reality, man. It's like you're going to go through your adversities. You're going to go through these struggles. And that's something that I learned over time. I was like, okay, I planned and planned and planned. And I was like, fuck, like nothing was going how it was going. You know, I only had a couple viewers for so long, for so many months. And then, like, I was like, ah, so many times I wanted to quit, but I just didn't. I I think a lot of people quit before they even start. What do you think about that? Quitting before you even start. Hmm. Quitting before you even start. I feel like if you quit at something and you didn't even start, it's not something you really wanted to begin with. Right. It's no, it was just something you thought you wanted. Because if you really love something, you're not going to quit at it. Oh my god. Thank you for the gift itself, Domo. <laughs> and with Jose launching fireworks. Thank you guys. What up, man? <laughs> Thank you, Jose. Thank you, Domo, for the gifted sub, man. I hope you like it, Miles. <laughs> here we go. Domo out here with the support. <laughs> you know, I feel like I honestly don't know much about streaming. But, I mean, oh, I was down. Go get it right no. now. <laughs> <laughs> maybe later, maybe later. I'll shout you out, too. <laughs> <laughs> I think, I don't know about streaming. I don't know what it is to, you know, start this and, you know, but I know what it feels like to love something and, you know, be good at it. Um, I'm, I don't know. I don't know if he's ever mentioned, but. I'm not a video game person. I'm more of a... I love horseback riding. I've been doing it since I was three. I've fallen off. I've gone stepped on. I've been kicked. I've. It doesn't matter. It's something I never gave up on. I love it, and I'm going to continue doing it. And I guess that's how he feels, and that's how I understand it, because I have something. It's not the same thing, but it's not something I'm going to quit on just because things get hard. And you're really good at <laughs> like, if I do say so. Like, like, yeah. Won, like, I've won big amounts of money barrel racing. I've done pulls. I've done Mexican style horseback riding, which is where you ride sideways on the saddle. And how long have you been riding uh, horses? Since I was three. Domo with the hundred. Domo's too generous, man. Thank you so much. Oh my god. Domo's crazy, bro. <laughs> Thank you for the bits. <laughs> no, but let them know like how long you've been like riding horses. 
Oh, I've been horseback riding since I think before I could walk, which was my father's biggest mistake and biggest regret. <laughs> I he's never gotten me off. You know, it's something I've always loved doing. I like the competition. Um, you know, it's just it's one of my favorite things to do. It's been a it wasn't a hobby for me. It was a lifestyle. And if that's how you want to treat your stream, you know what I mean? Like, don't treat it as a hobby. Don't treat it as a job. It's a lifestyle. Right. Oh, I can agree with that. It's a lifestyle. It's a way of living. It's it's who you are. It's what makes you you. It's you found something that makes you happy. <laughs> Girl, yeah. you're so pretty. <laughs> Right, if it's so you're not gonna quit on it because if it's who you are, it's what you love, you're not gonna just quit so easily because you're gonna have bad days. A hundred percent you're gonna have bad days and like my bad days was when I fell and the horse stepped on my back and you know, I had a (laughs) So the floor was slippery and my horse What were you doing? Like set up the environment? It was the day before a big ass competition. Um Hey, some more gang. Let's go. <laughs> so, it was the day before a big competition. It was the, it was state. It was, I do, it's called, an, it's, it's Spanish, it's Mexican, it's called an escaramuza. Basically, you ride sideways with pretty dresses and you do an elaborate dance on a horse. But you have to have your teammates doing exactly the same thing at the exact same time if not you're gonna crash into each other and it's just terrible so they had warned us before that the floor didn't have it was concrete and then it had like a little bit of sand on it so it it was too slippery for the horses my horse we were practicing and he slipped on his feet and he took me down with him so he fell completely on top of me and my friend's horse trampled over me and because I love what I do and I love my teammates, I wasn't thinking, oh, my God, I'm hurt. I'm going to stop everything because we were getting timed. And if we didn't get out of the arena at a certain time, we were disqualified. And I, I knew damn well I was not going to be the reason. <laughs> it was not going to be me. She's super competitive, just so you know. <laughs> super competitive. It was not going to be me. <laughs> so the first thing I did was just get back on. You know, my horse freaked out. He, he backed up. He didn't recognize me, but... If he didn't calm down and get back here, you know? So I just got back on and continued. Right after we exited the arena, I felt it. I was like, you know what? That that fucking hurt. Like, But I had competition the next day. And unfortunately, the same thing happened. But instead of falling with him, I was able to pick him up. And with that, I had... I won state with that. And I, they gave me this, this gold stick. I don't know. But I won state out of... Yeah, Texas. Even, even though the horse fell on you? He didn't fall. I, I picked him up. I was able to pick him up. Damn. Down on his spine, right? Yeah. Oh, my God. I have a, a herniated disc. Because the whole horse landed on you or because the... Because he landed on me, yeah. That, that didn't stop you? No, because that's what I love. Why would I quit? <laughs> Shit. See, that's what I'm talking about, dude. Like, dedication, bro. Dedication. Dedication to the things you love, you know, like, I'm such a strong believer in that. It's like, if you want something, you're going to go and go fucking go get it, dude. Like, it's it's just amazing the, the way, like, us humans are able in that. How did you, f- how did you feel when you fell? How did you feel when you fell? She asked. How did I feel when I fell? I... I didn't feel anything. I, I was pumped with adrenaline. I remember that. I remember being pumped with just adrenaline and just having to get back up and get back on there, you know? Like, it wasn't going to be me. I wasn't going to be the one to fuck up oh the team. <laughs> you know, there was there was two competitions. The one where you do, it's kind of you do from one, go from one end to another, and your horse has to drag its legs, and the one who drags, the, who makes the biggest drag wins. There was that one, and then there's the elaborate dance that you have with the horse. What's that called? What do you mean? Like, is that a section of the competition? Well, there's, okay, so it's called La Punta, because you basically make from one point to point A, from point A to point B. So the point. The point. 
And then there's the dance, which is just the right. uh, which is the main thing. But there's part of it I did by myself, and then the other ones with the team. I want state by myself, and you know, I brought honor to us all. <laughs> oh, yeah. And that's all part of like one like. Competition. Yeah, it's a competition. And it's like each section. Yeah. And there was like twenty. So in total, there I believe there was forty teams. Yeah. And that and every team has two girls do the point. So that was, it was, I won against 80 girls in the state. Oh, my God. It was in the state? Yeah. Won? Yeah. In Texas? In Texas. Jesus. And that's crazy, bro. Dude, that's crazy. hear me hello hello okay there we go i got you i got you i fixed it i don't know what happened right now we need another mic this is um some ghetto ass uh <laughs> no, <it's not. laughs> we need another mic <laughs> we'll do that over time though but yeah man i just like that that amount and domo said something says sticking with it pays off well i i i think i believe that so much it's like this is one of the greatest things i've ever heard is it took me 10 years to be an overnight success you know, I love I love saying that because it's the dedication, the not stopping, the willpower to continue like on something you love. I think it's like if you keep going at it and at it and at it, it's like eventually you'll reach that goal. I want one of the strong believers at that, you know. And um, I guess that come that com comes to this. It's like I know right now we're small and we're we're a small community, but we're definitely growing, dude. We're definitely freaking growing. That's what I love. Is that we're we're getting bigger and then, you know, going from like one viewer to like you know having streams with thirteen viewers for the guys who you're, who were there. Shout out to you guys. You guys, are, you know, you guys are real ones. But like, what do you think about that? Like seeing the process growing is uh, is the best part. Domo says, yeah, definitely, dude. That's why I always take a. Uh, I'm always grateful for these moments because I I'm gonna remember one day where we're finally where we want to be. You know, we're finally thousand two thousand viewers and. It's not going to be as intimate as it is now. Yeah, I missed the other night. <laughs> it's all good, man. But it's like, I'm grateful for these moments because it, it's not going to be as intimate as it once was before. And that's why I'm always going to be appreciative of this moment where we have this this unique community, these, our domos, our Dianas, our, our loves, you know, everybody who stops by consistently, everybody, you know. Shout outs to all you guys. You guys keep me motivated and we keep, we keep going. And I don't know what else to say. It's like, it's an, ama it's an amazing feeling. And I know one day when we finally get to 20,000, 30,000 views, we get to a big ass stream. You know, it's not going to be as freaking um, intimate, you know? What do you, and what do you think, What ha what's your perspective on the process of like what has happened? You know, like you've seen me from one viewer to now like 13 viewers. What's your perspective on that? My, I think it's not always going to be, you know, it's a, yes, yeah, so you're always going to celebrate it, of course, you know, you're going to celebrate, but it's going to get to the point where you're just going to be over the moon, you know, you're going to be excited over thousands and thousands of viewers, but I've known you for three years now, and I think even when you reach, you know, it's, you say, well, it's not going to be as intimate anymore. I don't, I'm not, that's one of my fears. I don't that's think that's true. One. You think so? I don't think that's true. I think no matter how many of you could have 100,000 viewers, you're still going to remember, you know, the Dianas. You're still going to remember Domo. You're still going to remember I Love. You're still going to remember everybody. Yeah. That for, You're going to notice them. They're going to stand out to you because they've been here since you had two live viewers. Right. So it's not that I don't think it's gonna. Oh, it's not gonna be as intimate anymore. I think it's always gonna be intimate because this matters so much to you. No matter, there's people who work. I know this because let's say when I was horseback riding and when I first started, I I made a lot of friends along the way, and you know a lot of people came up to me to congratulate me when I was in the moment to do when it was my turn to do the point. I remember I stopped and you kind of stop and you have to look at everybody, 
and the first people that stood out to me were my parents you know it was my my friends on the on the rails that would have been there with me watching me it was my coaches that I've had since I was eight years old because they showed up everybody else yeah they were cheering me on but they don't know me they've known me since I started and I was able to nitpick them in a big ass crowd of hundreds of thousands of people Right. So no matter how full the room was, those that always stood there by me were there for me from the beginning, always stood out. So I shouldn't be so fearful that No. You know. It just gets scary cuz like it just gets scary to me cuz it's like, oh man, like I love this part. You know, I love all this. I love the building. I love the the aspect of growing and maturing with you guys, you know, like you know, I get scared of that, where it's like, fuck, like, I don't want to be too, like, busy, where it's like, I can't even, you know, find you guys, but like she said, you're gonna rec- real recognize real, Domo said that the other night as well, you know, <laughs> but it's like, uh, out of the whole crowd, you know, there's still, st- 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 how do you say, stinked, what? like, uh, when you have those faces that are very, like, familiar to no, you, they're very distinct faces. yeah, distinct faces, excuse me, I can't speak, but you ha- you have those faces where I see what you're saying though. It's like you're gonna see them out of a thousand people in the yeah, crowd 100%. because they mean that much to you. You know they even they even have like a a glow to them. Would you say? Yeah. That's amazing, dude. That's that's hopefully that's what I'm looking for. I mean, what do you think? What are some of your thoughts on things? Sorry, I'm trying to look for a picture of my horse. <laughs> it's okay. What do you mean? What are my thoughts? Some of the things you want to ask for or something. What's it like dating a, somebody who's in the hospital? <laughs> oh, my God. Who's been here through COVID. I'm saving our, our patients. <laughs> <laughs> What's it like dating a hero? A hero? Oh, Tell my me. God. <laughs> my, my girlfriend works in the... Hello, hello. Okay, there we go. I don't know, man. Mic went out. Yeah, I know. I unplugged it on accident. She's over here like, she works at a medical, uh, what is it, a childers? A children's hospital. A children's hospital. Kids. So she's over here Superman now, (laughs) saving people. I mean, that's amazing. I think this is cool, you know, like the way you nurture and the way you care about people. I think that's that's amazing, you know. But uh, what's it like, especially at this time working in the medical field? Whatever, I'll put the picture of my horse later. What's it like working in the medical field? Yeah. Uh, scary, my throat hurts. I think I might have Ms. Rona. <clears throat> oh, my God. <laughs> Ms. Rona, is that you? Um, I don't know. It's scary. I mean, we do take a lot of precautions. Like today I had like three face masks on, and then I had a shield, had gloves. Yeah, shield? Yeah, the shield. Um, is it worse now? We have like hazmat suits. You already have to get into that. Yeah, Jeez. and it's kind of annoying because you're like, shh, 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 you know, when you're walking. Yeah. But I love helping people, you know. If you know, I don't know. I just I like helping people, and when they call frantically, I have. I'm not an empathetic person. I'm not. That's just not me. But what do you mean? I just I don't know. You know, they always tell you at jobs like in interviews, like you have to empathize with the patient. They're sick and. And most of the time, I'm like, yeah, of course, that's totally me. No, I'm not an empathetic person. But when it comes to kids, like, and I hear mothers, like, scared that their son, like, or their daughter, like, they might have COVID, that they can't breathe, they're running fevers. I wouldn't want that to be my child. Like, adult, I mean, you know, you've lived long enough. But oh my God. kids, like, are, like, <laughs> they're, like, innocent. Like, they mean no harm. And for them to be sick and having to go through this, like, it hurts me because COVID's affecting the elderly and it's affecting kids the most. Really? Yeah, I have a coworker, which I will not mention her name <laughs> for legal reasons. Her and her baby, who is two years old, are both in the hospital because her daughter got COVID really bad because of how where we were working. But because of that, they've taken much more precautions. Now everybody's like not close to each other, and 
everybody has to sit like six feet apart and for the most part we don't talk to each other because we're too far but she got really sick and you know she loves her daughter and she's a single mother and you know she was super scared and I get it but then she got sick so she's they're both at the hospital so needless to say COVID's getting worse oh yeah 100 percent it's getting worse I mean, and nobody's talking about it. Most people are like the presidential debate. Have you seen that meme where it's like, uh, pandemic isn't over? Oh my God. How does it go again? It's the pandemic isn't over just because you're over I it. I love that shit, dude. I love <laughs> that shit so much. I love it. I think that's so fucking funny, dude. <laughs> dude, because I'm being serious, dude. Like, I don't care what people say. Be safe out here with COVID. Dude, and there's some people, who, people are f- too afraid to talk about. Dude, and some people are out here. I don't judge people. You do how you do. You live your life. But hey, man, that uh, I'll talk. I'm talking about risk today, and that's not the risk I want to take. You hear me? I found it. Oh my god! Like I will sh- we'll show them right now. We're talking. We're talking about risk, but that those are there are some risk I'm not gonna take like that. Like I'm, I'm super like conscious. I'm gonna wear a mask. You know, like okay, I'll admit it. I'll show. I'll, I'll show some stuff. I'll admit some uh, side like. We we uh we live in an apartment complex, you know, so it's our home or whatever. For some reason, I felt comfortable without going without having a mask, like leaving my co- complex uh, apartment. Like going to the car. Like going to the car or doing something small outside. And then I thought to myself one day, I was like, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. I think these masks need to be on just generally outside. Now you're someone who works in the medical field, like do. I don't understand. I'm not really too informed on that, but like, do those germs or whatever stay in the air like that, or can they? Are they traveling through with the wind? I mean, I don't know, right? That could sound ignorant, but tell me. No, 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 not at all. Actually, it's COVID is airborne, and it's airborne. Huh? Yes, and it like How so. Airborne? Well, it's it's like. Like. In the air. Yeah, it's kind of like. In the air? Yeah, okay. so it's also. I know if you have COVID and then you get over it, you're okay for three months. But people think, oh, I already got COVID. I'm not going to get it again. No, you're fine for three months because the antibodies are in you. And it's, you're, you know, but it's, that's only going to last so long until you get it again. Right. You know, but there's also people who are asymptomatic, which is they're showing no symptoms. They're fine, but they're carrying COVID. And these people are like, oh, well, I don't have COVID. And they, they're feeling fine. They're going out. They're they're coughing, they're talking, they're touching things, and they're spreading it because they think they don't have it. Like today, a patient came in and he wasn't wearing a mask. He was an elderly person, and I was like, "Sir, can you please put on your mask?" And he goes, "No, I I just need to pick up my prescriptions." And I was like, "Okay, I'm not gonna give them to you until you put your mask on. Like, and you can't even be in this office." And he thought I was rude, and he goes, it's because I can't breathe in it, and I don't care. You're part of the problem. Oh, uh, yeah, and I was, I, I stood my ground. I'm not going to give him his damn prescriptions until he puts his mask on. He goes, well, I don't have one. So I gave him one. I was like, here you go. And he was like, yeah. he looked like he hated me, but I'm not just doing it for my safety, but for his, for his own. Mm-hmm. And even if he doesn't care about not getting sick and he doesn't believe in it, I care about this elderly man. And I want him to be okay because he thought he was at an age where he would not be okay with it. You know, he wouldn't survive it. Mm-hmm. Yeah, no, he wouldn't. Because we have to look out for each other. Yeah, hundred percent. You know, because you know, um, love thy neighbor. Exactly. <laughs> Even if thy neighbor does not love me. <laughs> <laughs> that's in, that's intense. And I guess my next question to you is like, how many of pe- how many of those people are you running into? Uh, not as much as you think. I mean, yes, we have those people, like, not wearing them in the elevators or in the common areas because, oh, one morning I can wear it in the office, of course. But, like, people being mindful, are actually, they're doing pretty good. Yeah, just generally good. I generally. mean, you're in a children's hospital. If you're going to be, you know, that much of a terrible person to harm children. <laughs> oh, my God, I guess you're right. That's always tough. Because this isn't, like a regular hospital where all adults are and you just don't care about people in general. It's you just kids. Like, there's babies coming in here and you're not going to put a mask on a baby. They don't know how to breathe in it. Or kids getting it or babies getting it? Oh, yeah. What are some of the symptoms that you're seeing in children? Uh, okay, so there's there's two. 
Right now, I noticed they told us. Yeah, I am not a doctor. I'm not a doctor. We're not. <laughs> both of us are not doctors, you know. And please, <laughs> please seek, please seek your own information. We're not liable for you guys or anything you guys do. All right, seek your own information. We're just two just people, just people who are speaking, you know, through passive knowledge, whatever. <laughs> a disclaimer. Warning: <laughs> What you may hear is not probably accurate. So the doctors were saying that there is new symptoms that are arising. Like people, if you have like pink eye, you could probably have COVID. Basically. Yeah. And like pink eye is starting to be one of the symptoms. There's your typical nausea, vomiting, uh, sore throat, um, coughing. What else? Fevers, uh, stomach pains. You know, you're you're you know. There's that one, and there's the one where it becomes respiratory because you have COVID with pneumonia, mm-hmm. which means that it's it's hurting your lungs, and you're having. That's where the trouble of breathing comes. That's where the intubation comes in. That's where they have to your oxygen levels get lowered, and they have to like flip you on your stomach, and they have to constantly move you, and that's and they keep you just sedated at that point. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Okay. That's worst case scenario. Or what's worse? What's worse when case? it goes to your lungs. Once it gets to your lungs, it's kind of really hard. This almost has so many symptoms and it doesn't end the, the pipe down. Yeah, no. Mm-mm. Damn, that's so crazy. I think it gets it's worse when it becomes when it goes to your lungs, Basically. because it becomes respiratory and then a lot of people can't fight that. It becomes a really bad. Yeah, because your your oxygen levels will lower. So and they are have you to. Seeing a lot of people with that. Not a lot of people get their respiratory. I mean, they are mostly elderly are getting the respiratory, but kids are doing pretty good and not getting that far. Mm. Now you have kids with asthma; it goes respiratory almost right, instantly. Yeah, it goes respiratory <laughs> almost instantly. That's the scary part. It's like, see, that's that's super scary. You know, it's like you know, I have my son. He has he suffers from the what's the right word to say asthma? Asthma. Just asthma, right? Yeah. He suffers from asthma, man. So like even more fearful, you know? So that's why I'm super precautious. I, at least I try to be okay. I'm not a, also, I'm not a perfect por- person. I can admit that. Like, I, I can't, you know, it's like, I try to be as mindful as I can be, right? I wear my mask. I do everything. I do as best as I can. It's like, to avoid this, not only for me, but for my son, you know, I don't want, especially him, like, that's crazy. It's so scary. One health issue can just multiply the risk of getting it. Exactly. No, no, no. Big no-nos here, man. Gotta wear your mask, guys. If, you know, if not for you, for the next person next to you, right? But at the end of the day, you have those people who are skeptics and, you know, are factual science, you know, who, you know, throw all those, what they, pseudoscience it. I don't know if that's the right term to use there, but you know what I'm trying to say. It's like, you do what you do, and if you can't change the minds of others, you can only do the best you can do, you know? You do your part. But you don't even have to have symptoms to know you have COVID. It's just scary out here. For sure, man. For sure. And it's like, look at all these kids. They're not even going to school anymore, dude. Like, how's that been? Like, has that, have? how can you see an increase of things in kids if they haven't even been to school? I was in the grocery store earlier and saw so many people without masks, even the elderly. Hey, man, like I said, you do your part. If people don't want to do, they do, they have their free choice. They have their free will. If they want to do that, then. That's on them, hey man. As long as you're doing your precautions and stuff like that, that's all you can do. You know, it's just scary out here, and it's a, it's a very, it's a very tough time. It's like what, what is confusing to me is like, how are you seeing an increase when the kids are not even going to school? You know, or are kids, or are kids going to school? Where are they getting this from? So, from what you heard, it's like half and half. Some kids are going to school. And that, but they're really just like on like computers at school, but they're sending them home and I get it. They're sending them to school because, pe- you know, people work. Normal is getting harder and harder to get back, yes. I don't think we're going to go back to normal. Ever? Not to anytime soon. Maybe in the next, you know, when do we go back to, how long did it take for us to get back to normal with the swine, with the swine flu? Do you remember that? No. I was like in elementary and everybody was panicking with masks and I was, I didn't understand you know, um, but my parents were, I was young and I had, yeah, yeah. Water? no, it doesn't matter. Oh, oh no, my Snapple. Oh, that's good. 
um i don't think we're gonna get back to normal anytime soon really um i think it's not back to normal you have to get used to it's going is getting used to the new normal this is the new normal if that makes any sense <laughs> you know this is going to be the new normal the new normal is wearing masks i mean i other countries do it because they care about their citizens and what's so bad about america adapting this you know just being cautious right i don't think we're gonna get back to normal i think we have to accept this is the new normal i mean other countries wear masks Oh, and I wanted to pinpoint something. Um, you said earlier, like, there's people who don't believe it. You're right. Yeah, the conspiracy, the, the skeptics. Yeah, no, and I'll admit it. My my parents didn't believe in it. They're like, nah, you know. Um, Pete, my dad didn't believe it until I went. I, w- was, I was still working in the hospital back in March, and I went to go get tested. But I wasn't, I was, it was just precaution. Um, but I went to go get tested, and I came back positive. I didn't have any of the symptoms, but I had to stay home. But I stayed home for other people, not for me. I could have still gone out and been like, well, I feel fine. I don't really think it's true. And I could be part of the group that's all like, oh, well, you know, the government's using this and they're making false positives. But what are, what are you getting from that? They're not make the vaccine's not out yet. So it's not like they're making money off of a vaccine. Mm-hmm. Maybe out of the tests. But I, you know, I saw I saw patients really having it, and it didn't look like the flu. It looked like something different. You know, I, we deal with the flu every year. Every year, we know what the flu looks like. We know how people look on the flu. This was something different. They looked yellow. Are you serious? They looked ugly. Oh <laughs> you know, I love, you know, I, I have a habit of learning the patient's name, building a bond with them because I love them, and I want them to be okay, and... I remember their names. I remember their voices, you know. And they came in office, and they were just different. They looked yellow. No lie, I think I had I had it last December. Went to the doctor, and they changed their name. Exactly, you know that's happened to him. Um, I felt terrible for almost three elderly people. Right, right. So he got super sick, and they told him it was the flu, but it didn't look like the flu. He was just in bed he wasn't leaving and like i don't know if it's just me but i feel like when people get sick they smell weird they smell different they smell like they're sick it smells like you're sick you smell like sickness it's weird and it's working at a hospital i promise you there's a smell to to being sick oh wow really everywhere yeah like people have a sick smell like oh, my it's like i don't know like, like all the sweat and all the, like, yeah it's like it's like it smells like you're sick And, I mean, I'm used to it because I work there and I kind of have to not vomit in front of them because it's disrespectful. And you touched on earlier, like, uh, you were wearing, like, hazmat. Like, can you elaborate more on that or expand on it? What are some precautions you guys are doing? Well, we only do that when we have to go outside to test them. And how often is that? Pretty often. Because most of the patients want to go come get tested and my insurance will cover it. I can get it tested as many times as I want. Right. And you're thinking... Yeah, of course, because at the end of the day, I have to worry about myself because I have to come home to you, to your son, and God forbid y'all get sick because of me, mm-hmm. because I wasn't careful enough. Yeah. All right, let's uh, segue out of this COVID talk, dude. <laughs> <laughs> oh, this is a, this is her horse from when she was riding in the competition. What was the, what was the horse's name? This is the horse. I don't know if you guys can see it. This is her competition. This is your competition horse? Yeah. She won competitions with this horse. This is the one that fell on you? Yeah. <laughs> this, is the, this is the competition horse right here. Yeah, let's get bring the hype back. <laughs> Air horns. <laughs> no, but yeah, I mean, like I said, we're not doctors. You guys need to you do your own research. Hopefully that you guys get informed on that. I'm only doing what I'm being told. I'm listening to what they're telling me. Wear a mask, wear everything you can. You know, for her, she works at a children's hospital, so she's doing the best things she can do to be precau- precautious about that. But at the end of the day, it's up to you guys, you know. 
I'm not the decider or I don't claim to know everything, nor are we both doctors, right? But, yeah, it's just like, uh, it's a crazy time right now. It's a crazy time, but what about taking advantage of the moment? Sure, sure, we're like in-house and everybody has to take a break from, you know, their social life. Or some people don't take breaks from their social life. Let's be honest. How many people you've seen at the bar? <laughs> how many pe- How many people you've seen, you know, but we're not here to be judgmental, you know. But what what are you what can you take away from being in uh what would you say, what are we in what, what do they call it lockdown or what is it what, what what can you take away what are some positives you can take away from being in the pandemic you know what what have you learned nothing um oh my god i'm just being a hater cuz i didn't get unemployment <laughs> everybody and their moms and their grandmas got unemployment and i was told no you know those plus six hundred dollars everybody was making it was ridiculous i mean it was great for those getting it but those working i think that sucked because how is it that oh well your job is gonna you know you got unemployment i get it i'm just being a hater i guess but but you had some pla- places like like we have like tell them we have a place here in texas called H E B. Uh huh. So we, they can't hear. I don't think they can hear you. Oh. We have we have places here like called H B and they're giving their employees like how much bonuses? Oh well, yeah, they're giving them like plus five hundred dollars or whatever. But so that was places. It's just where you're working, you know. Okay, but I was working at the hospital. What did I get? The same X amount of money I get paid every single day, even besides the pandemic. Yeah, yeah. You're right. I'm, I'm not arguing. Where's the compensation for workers, for healthcare workers? Kind of like at your own risk. Yeah, they're like, sorry. <laughs> right, at your own risk working. You know, it must have been nice getting plus six hundred dollars. You know, unemployment and plus six hundred dollars. Of course, I think it's getting to a point where people got way too comfortable with it, and they were like, oh, well, I'm gonna stay in unemployment for the rest of my life. Why would you want to go back to a job? Let's say you're getting paid five hundred dollars at a job. Unemployment's giving you five hundred. Plus six hundred on top. That's eleven hundred dollars. You were not making at all. Why would you want to go back? Or we're gonna make. You're making that in two, like in a month, and you're making this in two weeks. I just don't. I don't. I understand it, but I don't think it's sustainable. Also, it's not sustainable because it's gonna run out at one point, and then you're gonna have a million people looking for jobs at the same (laughs) time. Million people. And some of these people have, you know, degrees. They have, you know, like my mom always said, if you got an employment, she's like, you can't be on that very soon. She goes, because there's people that are better than you and, you know, that have degrees that, you know, and if it means working like at HEB plus if that person has a bachelor's and you just have an associate's, who do you think they're going to go with? Are you one of those people that believe degrees are like, like, uh, do you think you need a degree? No, not at all. Oh, okay. No, I don't think you need a degree to have a good life. I know my mom's friend, very close friend, she had a PhD. And I'll never forget, because I was like, um, most people, you know, have their PhD frames. Um, She was using hers as a mouse pad. Are you serious? <laughs> and I was like, why do you have it like that? She goes, because I don't need it. She ended up just doing something completely different. Mm-hmm. But she has a PhD. What do you think that is? Is that someone who followed what they were told to follow yeah but she did it spitefully you know i remember her parents like forcing her to go to go- her parents were doctors and she did the same thing she followed in their footsteps because that's what they wanted and she ended up just being a very successful business owner are you serious mm-hmm. and she you know her parents are like oh my god you shouldn't have your phd just thrown around like that and she's like i'm using it as a mouse pad you know it's useful she's like it's as useful as it's gonna be to me but that's not <laughs> what she really wanted no how many people fall into that? They, like, do things that, like, how many people do you run into that are just chasing in a career and whatever it is, just to say that they went to college, or just, I don't know, for whatever reason it might be, someone, people that are not even doing what they actually want to do. What do you think about that? I'm not sure, because, I mean, the people I've met in college know what they want, they're very excited about it. I've never really met somebody that's like, oh, I don't want to be here, because if you don't want to be there, you're going to not be there, you know? Not many people have that courage, I think. Not to do that. You really think so? You really think there is people who are not going? I think my belief is, you know, if I have kids and they come out to me and they're like, "Mom, I don't want to go to college," I'm gonna be very mad. 
Are you serious? Like, I would be very mad because do your basics. You know, I think, exp- so. I think college is not like it's like not a step. It's a not a stepping stone, but more of an experience. I think everybody deserves to experience college because it's fun. You get to meet intellectual people. You know, they're smart. They have their own opinion, even if they're wrong. They stand by their opinions. You know, you I have people they want something out of life. And, you know, even if you don't, even if you want to do whatever, something else, I think experience in college it's like great. You make friends that could last a lifetime. Domo says, "I'm fucking here and not even thinking about college." I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> so you are, you are guys a pro college. You are, you are like for. I don't think you need college to be successful. I think there's the experience is what you need. Yeah, the experience. Mm-hmm. And a lot of people say, "Well, oh my God, Bill Gates didn't finish college. He dropped out. You know." Yeah, he dropped out of Harvard. <laughs> he says, "I want to go get." I want to go to get her own experience, but be around in new circles. Of, of course, you know, I think college people, like, if you say some dumb shit, they're going to correct you. They're not going to let you be ignorant around them. Yeah. They, they have their own opinions. They're going to, they're going to lead you in a, in a different way. And if not, you know, you always run into those teachers that genuinely care. They love their job. They genuinely give a fuck about their students. Of course, there's that one fun teacher that doesn't care, and they're like, nah. You know? <laughs> but you're always going to encounter her. For me, was my English teacher. She gave me her phone number, and she, when I had hard times, she gave me her address. Because I was a troublesome kid, and she was all like, she saw something in me, and she made helped me with college, and she helped me with my essays, and she saw something in me that I didn't see in myself. So because of her, I wanted to go to college. That motivated to go. Yeah, because she showed me she gave a shit. <laughs> right, exactly. Because uh, she could do she could do that without going to school, but she just has no ambition on going. I think that's that's more of a what problem within her, right? What do you mean? Like what he's saying, it's like she has no ambitions, so she has no goals. What do you think about that? Like people who generally don't have those ambitions, who don't have those goals, you know, are they not? Is it? Are they not used to chasing something, or are they not used to, you know, what do you think about that? Like, having no ambition, having no goals, like. I don't think it's the right answer, though. <laughs> I mean, it's just opinions. It's not that it's right or wrong. Nor it's towards Domo's sister, but I think just generally that might be. So, generally, I think people... I think everybody has a goal. She had everything given to her. She just not even bothered. You see, that's that's also not true. I mean, yes, I don't. I'm not saying that she didn't so have my, anything. My opinion, your opinion is. Is I had everything handed to me. You know, I had a brand new car when I was 16, and then I crashed it within two weeks. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I have, you know, the new iPhone. Every time it comes out, I have. You know, the brand new MacBook that just comes out, you know. I had everything handed to me. But it got to the point where my dad would be like, no, you can't have that. You have to wait. And if I was waiting a week to get the new iPhone, I'd throw a tantrum because my best friend already had it. And that's blasphemy. And you know, <laughs> and then I went and got a, a good job. My first job was at a hospital as well. And they paid me good. And I, I was like, you know, I'm going to buy things for myself. And I don't know, I got to the point where I started paying attention to my parents. And I noticed that they were working hard to give me whatever I wanted. (laughs) And I was like, oh, wait a minute. Like, it's not just coming out of trees. And my dad said, well, money doesn't grow on trees. Well, it's paper. Yes, it does. And he'd be like, you're a smart ass. And we'd have a back and forth thing. And you know, I'd see him, my dad, like, stress out and be like, it's because I want to get her everything she wants. I'm an only child, so I, I don't share. <laughs> I'm very spoiled. And, you know, I ask for money, and it's given to me, but I realized I had to really pay attention to, I had to look at myself. I had to see that they were, it wasn't just easy for them. You know, yes, my dad had his company, and my mom was my mom was my mom. Um, she usually said my dad told him no, don't get her everything. 
but I think you found you found to you as you as you got older you found like okay so let's let's actually analyze this right you said you were getting everything you were getting everything handed you were you know they'll buy you anything but what made you stop and say okay where is this actually coming from you know like maybe his her his sister for example isn't aware of my parents worked for this what made you stop and say okay like uh what made you stop and say let me look at what they're doing so i so they're up, so they can um give me these things you know what was that wake up call for you you know that wanting oh. to change maybe that can help well one time um we lived uh my parents didn't always have money we lived in an apartment for a very small apartment it was a like a one bedroom and you know even then i was spoiled i was like well i want the room and my parents would sleep in the living room <laughs> cheese share what you want to share just think of this yeah thing. it's just I, it's, you asked me the question that's how yeah. i got there and my mom finally got her house my dad you know built her her house or whatever and she was super happy and I complained about the location. I was like, it's so far from my friends and I'm not going to be able to drive. I was like a spoiled 15 year old girl. And I was like, I need a car. And that's how I managed to get my car, by the way. But, um, and you know, I, my dad wanted my mom to be happy. So everything we owned in our small apartment, he sold, actually he didn't sell it. He gave it to our downstairs neighbor. That's a different story. Um, and he bought everything brand new and, I don't know, he wanted to be happy, and he spoiled himself, and he bought, like, a $5,000 rug that my dog took a shit on, and he lost his shit, <laughs> but long story short, uh, there was a day that I came home, and I, my dad was like, can you pick up the mail, and I was like, yeah, yeah, that's fine, I checked, found shit to lose his shit, yeah, <laughs> oh my God. so my dad asked me, he's like, hey, like, I'm running late, can you pick up the mail, and I was like, yeah, okay, so I was just looking at, <laughs> I was just looking at, in the car, I remember sitting in my car and looking at all, like, the mail, and it was just bill, like, after bill, after bill, and it was, like, the light was $500, the water was $300, the, well, you have to pay the city, like, like, I was, like, holy shit, like, and, like, our house was, like, you know, X amount of money, and I was, like, oh, my God, like, and I'm still asking for more. Because there was still my car payment and there was still the insurance. There was still whatever little girl wanted. If I wanted to go out and I'd be like, Dad, I want money. And he'd be like, oh, my God. So you found like, do you think that you found, would you say it's empathy? You found empathy for him or do you find did you all that emotion? Maybe empathy. Com- I felt compassion. Compassionate. I felt compassion. I felt bad, and I felt like I had a job, and I was just throwing my money at, you know? I was the type of person that I'd, I'd tell my friends, hey, like, let's go out, and I'll buy them clothes. I'll, you know, I'll... One time, this girl was in my softball team. She didn't have enough for the uniform, and it was, like, $500. And I remember just giving her the money. And I was like, let's go buy you some shoes, too. And, like, you know, I loved her, and to this day, she's a great person. Don't get me wrong. Um, But I feel like... Instead of going outwardly t- towards my friends, it should have gone to my parents. As for, you know, not having any ambitions or any goals, I feel like everybody has goals. Yeah. I think everybody has a dream, even if it was when you were little and you wanted to be an astronaut, you know. Everybody has one. I don't think there's no such thing as there's no ambition, there's no goals. I think everybody has them. I think you just surround yourself around people who don't, you know. Not the don't, I feel like, but they, if you surround yourself around people who think their goals are not reachable, they're going to make you feel the same way. I, I, have, I, have a, I have a thought on that. There's this, there's this great professor and great guy, um, also a clinic, clinically a psychiatrist or a therapist. His name is Jordan Peterson. He talks about, like, with people who don't have ambitions and have goals, he talks about how you may not know what your goal is right now, or you may not know what you want is, you may not know what you want right now, but the fact that you're sitting there and not trying to find out what exactly that is, is already, you know, it's a detriment to you, right? Right. I think, I think for, for me, cause I had the same, I had the same issue in high school. It's like, 
they were telling me, hey, you know, do this, do that, do this, do that. It's like, I did it all, but I really not, I really never found enjoyment in there. That's why I ended up leaving ultimately high school, right? That's a whole different thing we will talk about hopefully later. But for so long, I sat there and I was like, okay, I don't know what I want to do. And I don't know, like, how I'm going to do it, but I have to figure out what I want to do. You can't just sit there and expect something to just hit you and be like, oh, well, finally I figured it out. No, what he says is that you have to go out there and go try and try and try. Keep trying until you figure it out. You don't lose anything. All you do is gain knowledge. You're never gonna you're never gonna lose anything. All you're gonna do is gain from that. It's like, okay, I didn't like this. Perfect. At least I gave it a try. Or whatever. Let's go do another thing, you know? Until you find that one thing. The more that you sit there and the more that you don't move, the more that you don't try to do shit, the more that you're gonna keep taking away days and hours from your life. When you could be doing like Figuring it out is most most exactly figuring it out most of the battle, and I'm gonna link. Hopefully, I can link this uh, Jordan Peterson video so you guys can check it out if you want to. But yeah, he talks about it and he very elaborates and expands on that. It's like that's one of the things that big like motivated me. It's like go do something, go do something, try something. You know, you don't have to be the most ambitious person. You don't know. You don't have have to be the go seek uh, like seeking goals person but at least try it you know and i think that's really helped my life out to at least attempt things you know i think that can really help your sister out just you know go tell her to try something try anything you know go work at a restaurant go work here go do this have experience on whatever area do something and from there at least you can start eliminating things that you'd like and you can start uh, sorry, you can start eliminating things you dislike and you can start adding to things you like. What do you think about that? <laughs> I mean, <laughs> I don't disagree. Generally, it, what I was trying to say, just better worded. Um, but at the end of the day, I think who you surround yourself has a lot to do. Like if you surround yourself around people who want to go to college and imagine yourself in high school right yeah and imagine you surround yourself around people who you know wanted to go to college and want to move away and they want to experience college and they want to you know struggle with their classes they want to yank out their hair with midterms and finals and but they want to do that mm -hmm. do you think you would be interested too Probably, most, likely. most likely now if you surround yourself around some bum drug addicts what do you think you're gonna do you're going to go do what they're doing. Right. So you're a product of your environment? Of course. You know, Whatever and if... Whatever environment that is. Yeah, and if you know you're around people who are just, nah, dude, like, you should drop out. Like, I'm over here working at fucking, you know, Walmart, and I'm making so much bank. Of course. Making $700. Wait, there's nothing wrong working at Walmart. No, no, no. But, like, if you're, if you're like, you know what I mean? Like, you're in high school, and you're, you're making $800, $900 every two weeks. Of course, that's amazing. But is it? Uh, you, don't, you, don't have any you don't really have bills, and but is it a sustainable life? No, that's not sustain. That's not sustainable at all. That's not enough. <laughs> you know, and I'm not shooting at people who work at Walmart. You know, I'll be honest. My mom. It's just an example. No, yeah. Don't, don't tell. It's okay. It's oh. just an example. Why? Because it's like it's, it's too personal. You're saying. Well, I mean, I don't care. Oh, I guess. So my mom doesn't have to work. My dad has. I mean, he sold his company because X and Y reasons, but. <laughs> You know, he's he's well off, you know, and my mom doesn't have to work, but she I moved to San Antonio and she's lonely and she has the two dogs at home. So she just didn't want to stay home. So she's a manager at Wendy's and she has her money and she does what she does. And she comes home and does what every other person complains and complains about her job. And but it like she likes to tell me it's not a sustainable life. It's great for now, but it's not going to, you know, it's not going to make you live in a mansion it's not going to help you live you know comfortably because when i was in high school i never thought i wanted to go to college really what changed it's like that like it's just like finding that ambition i don't know like that motivation what do i want to do i don't know dude like you say it's like 
figuring it out is most of the battle, but some people are not willing to make that battle. Tomo says, but eventually I just weighed my pros and cons, and then going to school was the only op- option. That boy optimized his his life right there. That boy hit him with a with a fucking uh fucking a mix up right there, dude. You know what I'm saying? He two aged his world right there. But anyways. <laughs> Do you think going to college was the better option for you, personally? Was it, like, the better option? Yeah, I mean, I realized I wanted to go to college when I was, like, 12. <laughs> because a cop told me. Um, One time, my dad, my dad, he freaks out when there's cops. He freezes. He doesn't know his name, doesn't know his birthday. Nope, will not speak. He, he might run. You know, <laughs> he gets jittery. He doesn't like it. And I remember he crashed into this brand new Mercedes, <laughs> and he has a big F one fifty truck. So he destroyed that car. My dad. <laughs> my dad had a. Um, he, I believe he had like basic insurance, but that wasn't gonna help with the Mercedes because it was a brand new Mercedes. And the cop shows up and asks my dad some questions, but my dad freezes. So he puts him in the back of a car. (laughs) He goes, I'm just putting him there because I think he's going to run. And I was like, okay, I'll answer the questions. And he told me, does your dad have a license? Technically, he did. But my dad used to race in high school, (laughs) so he had it suspended. (laughs) So he asked me, does your dad have a license? And I said, yeah, he does. So then he goes and he checks and he comes back. He goes, your dad's license is suspended. And I was like, well, yeah, I know that. And I was like, you said if it was, if he had a license, you never asked if it was active. And he laughed. And he said, ha, you should be a lawyer one day, kid. And I was like, wow. And that stuck with me since I was very young. And, which is funny, uh, there ended up being no court case. And the lady with the Mercedes never showed up. And, you know, it was just a blessing. And the, the cop never submitted the ticket. So it was like it never happened. Of course, I think college makes you, like, figure out who you are, who you want to be, and, like, there is trial and error. There is, you know, figuring out what you really want to do, what really makes you happy, and you meet amazing people there. I think everybody should experience college, even if it is just your basics. Well, there, (laughs) there you go, guys. You know, this has been an amazing podcast today. I thank you all guys for coming by. Hope you guys really take take in. I really took in a lot of today and really learned a lot. I think was today was a good episode. Thank you for coming by today. I hope we can have more with my lovely girlfriend. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, this has been the prolific. Co- Let me try that again. <laughs> this has been the prolific podcast. I hope you guys have a wonderful night or wonderful day, depending on where you're at. And it's gonna be on YouTube if you guys want to check it out. Uh, my the link for the YouTube channel is down below in one of the things down here. You can you can click the the YouTube sign and it'll take you directly over there. But uh, overall, I think you guys uh, thank you guys for coming by, and sticking around. Thank you Domo for the donations. I much appreciate that. But uh, hope you guys have a great night. See you later. Anything you want to end with? Please wear your mask. Don't be an ass. <laughs> And also, we're not doctors, so please seek your own COVID information. We're not liable for what you guys do. When you get it, when you get it. <laughs> when you get it. <laughs>